In this video, I'm going to show you a really cool way to use watercolour pencils to add interest, texture and detail to your watercolour paintings. Welcome back to the channel. If we haven't met before, my name is Michelle and on my channel you'll find art tuition and art business advice, so please do consider subscribing. So when I first started painting, I bought myself a set of watercolour pencils and I did a little sketch. I put some water on. I was rather underwhelmed, to be honest, because um, they didn't seem to have a lot of pigment and I couldn't seem to get rid of all the little sketch lines that I'd done. So I didn't use them for a while after that and it was only years later that I discovered their true potential. And for me, my favourite way of using them is to actually add them to my watercolour paintings um, as part of the painting process. So I'm going to point the camera downwards and we're going to have a talk about just how to do that. So I'm going to use these pencils here. Um, they're different colours, but they're all the same brand. So these are Derwent. Derwent, one of the best pencil manufacturers in the world. Lots of other brands available, but you do get what you pay for. So you want to uh, you want to make sure you're buying a decent brand of, uh, of watercolour pencils. I'll link to these in the description. You um, can buy a whole set. If you don't have a lot of money, it's uh, worth just buying them singly because most art shops and most online supplies sell them singly. And... Um, it's, it's just worth having one or two in your box. There we go. And the technique I'm going to show you today involves painting, uh, drawing rather, into wet paint with your watercolour pencils. Now, why am I drawing into, into wet paint? And the reason for that is that they will release a lot more pigment that way. So if you draw them onto dry paper, they don't release a whole lot of pigment and it's quite hard to get them to disperse evenly. So with this, I'm going to actually draw into the wet paint and you'll be amazed at the, uh, the detail that we can get. So there's my yellow petal and it's still wet and I'm going to take, um, I've got a purple here, I'm going to take this and draw in. So you know you get those um, petals where you might get little lines and things in. There we go. And this is fantastic for things like hydrangea petals. You see the detail I'm getting there and you just couldn't get that level of detail if you were using a paintbrush, not as quickly anyway. You'd have to use a tiny paintbrush and it would take ages. So next we're going to look at the idea of adding dots to things. So this would be like for lily petals. You know, you get that sort of uh, that dust uh, on lily petals and other flowers too. So in this case, um, I think I'll... Uh, I'll use more of a pinky colour. And I'm going to keep it fairly light because I'm going to add darker spots on it with a sort of a, a crimson pencil. Now the first pencil I used would had just been sharpened so you've got a nice crisp line. The one I'm going to use now is a little bit blunter because I want those dots to be a little bit larger. So I'm just going to paint this colour on and then I'm going to press on with the crimson coloured watercolour pencil and see if we can get some of those markings that you get on lily petals. Here we go. And I hope you're getting an idea of just, you know, what a fabulous technique this is and how well it works and how much time it can save you when you're painting. Next, we're going to look at putting veins on a leaf. Now, leaf veins are sometimes, um, you know, not not soft. Sometimes they're hard edge. So this is not suitable for every type of leaf. But um, oh, that's a bit blue, isn't it? Let's put some yellow in that. But we're going to use it to get soft veins on this leaf. So I'm putting my paint on there. A few little drips over to one side, which I could easily blot up if I hadn't left kitchen paper right over the other side of the studio before turning the camera on. Never mind. I know you'll forgive me. Okay, so there's my wet leaf and now I'm going to draw into that. I've got a very um, natural colour here called olive green, but I could use a brighter colour if, uh, if, that's, if that's what was demanded of it. And not only can you do leaf veins like this, but if you've got autumn leaves, you know you have this sort of a bite holes in or you've got crinkly edges, you know, if there's a little bit of a, a brown edge to it, let's have a go. Let's put something around the edge here. You know, you can see the details that you can get by just using 
the watercolour pencils. The last one I'm going to show you before we go on to looking at landscapes is, um, is a seashell. Now, watercolour pencils are fantastic for putting really um, fine lines and cracks and, uh, and little, little crevices on things like rocks and seashells. So if you ever had one of those pebbles that's got that kind of crack line across it, watercolour pencil, absolutely the best way of doing it. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, just put a little bit of colour on my seashell. Let's just warm that up a bit. So I'm putting this underneath layer of colour on. And you can see with the pencil what I've done is I've already um, indicated roughly where the lines go on this uh, on this seashell. Just give me a bit of uh, a bit of a map, as it were, for somewhere to put the watercolour pencil, and it'll be covered up by the time you finish. So don't worry about that. So here we go. I've got my seashell. Just going to lift a little bit of colour out along the middle there. Now I'm going to take, I've got a sort of um, a neutral grey colour here, but we could use brown or even yellow. You know, whatever's appropriate for your seashell, and we're going to start making those marks. Now think how long this would take to put all of this detail on with a paintbrush, quite a while. And you can combine it with other methods, you know, if you want to add a little bit of a uh, little bit of colour somewhere on it, you know, so I'll get a little bit of yellow here, let's pop that in while it's still wet. And you really can build up and layer these techniques and, um, and get some lovely effects going on. So let's have a look now at using watercolour pencils on landscape situations. So they're fantastic for foregrounds. Now I've actually already worked into this one a little bit with watercolour pencils and maybe when I did the uh, the last demonstration you were wondering what happens if, if the paint is already dry and you want to add your watercolour pencil. All you've got to do then is add clean water because we want the, the area to be wet because if it's not wet, the, the pencils are not going to release a lot of pigment. So whilst you could draw onto this dry and then add water, it's not going to be as effective as if you re-wet. So what I'm going to do is add some more water here. I think, to be honest, we'll just take it right the way across. So now that area is wet, what's going to happen is when I put the watercolour pencil on, it's going to release a lot more pigment. And I can use it for all sorts of things. So I can use it just to generally add some dark marks and get some details going on. I can use it to add actual grasses. Now if you're doing this, do remember that you want the, uh, the grasses to be bigger in the foreground. Let's put some large ones here. Draw them upwards in the direction that they're growing because as the pencil lifts off, you'll get that tapering and then so it'll look a lot more natural. And to do smaller ones as you go further into the picture. And you can just, uh, as I said, just use it just to add a little bit of, uh, of, of shadow or darkness or interest. Now, although this isn't a beach picture, you can see how effective this is for beaches as well. When you've got little pebbles and things, you know, you can just get those little areas of texture in. So do consider using watercolour pencils to add interest to your landscape foregrounds too. Other places you could use them would be um, things like brick walls, things like um, tree stumps and tree trunks. Anywhere really where you need linear and, um, and soft dots and details, you can add your watercolour pencils. And if you're ready to take your creativity to the next level with lots of art tips, art techniques, art tutorials, um, business advice and social media advice for artists, please do subscribe.